If someone actually asks, it's like, hey, can we use a condom? Is there a sense of disappointment? On a yes! Like it I like to say HIV saved my life, as I would have never stopped. When you love who you are and stay true to yourself, you inspire others to do the same. Ask your healthcare provider if Big Tarvi is right for you, or visit BigTarvi.com to view the important facts, including important warnings. Hey there, welcome to the show where we get right into it. No holds barred. We are about keeping it real and living life to the fullest. That means no shame, no stigma, and without limits. We are turning positive into a plus. So let's get into it. Today's show topic, HIV, love and sex. I am joined by the lovely Dr. Anusa Shadri. I call her Dr. Anu because it's easier. Raif Darazi and Dustin Poilas. Guys, thanks so much for being here. Uh, we're keeping it real. We're just going straight into it. So, guys, take your pick. Who's going to answer first? What was your sex life like before your HIV diagnosis? <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> I, was in, I was actually in a uh, three and a half year monogamous or so I thought relationship at the time. So I, HIV was the last thing on my mind even at that point. I, didn't, I wasn't expecting to have any STI whatsoever. And it was later that I found out that he'd been cheating. Um, I'm assuming he gave it to me, I'm not sure, but yeah. Well, hang on, you're assuming, you're not sure, but if you were monogamous. I was, but I did have unprotected sex before our relationship. I was tested negative, but it was within like a certain window. So I could have possibly carried it and not known. I want to ask okay. about that, and then we'll get to you in a second, Dustin, about your first. I can't wait to delve into your sex life. But <laughs> talk to me about that, because I had a similar thing. You know, I was dating somebody. We both got tested together. Uh -huh. We both got negatives. And then a couple of months later, we decided to get tested. I was positive, and I had not slept with anyone in that window mm -hmm. period, and he was negative. Talk to us about that, because that's an important point. So when you get infected, right, it's a virus, there needs to be an opportunity for the virus to actually enter your body, you know, lodge into a cell, replicate. And so the tests that are out there, there needs to be enough of the virus to actually be positive. Register on the test. Register on the test. So that's why there's, you know, it's kind of like pregnancy. Like if it's too early in the pregnancy, you can't detect it. You have to wait for a certain amount of time for the hormone to actually pop up on the pregnancy test. So like that, it's Something the same thing. Something these boys know all right. about, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's the similar concept. There's a window period for the test and enough of that virus to have it load enough. So what Rafe up. is saying is like, okay, he was in a three year monogamous relationship. Right. Okay, you had had unprotected sex before you got into the relationship. Does that mean that for that three years until you decided to get tested, you never had a test in that time? Correct. So could have he been HIV positive the entire time and really have no idea? Yeah, you could have. And because when I was diagnosed um, and he subsequently was diagnosed, we both had full-blown AIDS. So it had yeah. been there for a while. Right. Yeah. Sure. So, so yeah. Dustin, tell me about what your sex life like was before your diagnosis. Um, it was Grinder and Mickey's. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Living in West Hollywood, it was great. Um, yeah, I mean, it was just hookup from hookup. I wasn't even looking for a relationship. And we, was, it cycle, was it always condomless? Um, majority of the time, um, unless the guy was sketchy, then I was like, What uh, constitutes a sketchy? Uh, like he unkept, looked sketchy? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> but that could have yeah, been- just unkept, I guess you could say. That could have been drugs. Yeah, and then, yeah, so I never really, I mean, I did drugs, but I never really put it out there. I kind of had this like- The drugs were on the deal. Yeah. yeah. I have a question to ask though, as far as uh, the, con Condomless, right? Mm -hmm. Condomless and with condoms. If someone actually asks, and that's the that's just a stigma behind it too. It's like, okay, can we use a condom? There's a sense of is there a sense of disappointment? I mean, to be honest, yes, with you, like it, right? Yeah, and I think so. For me, um, <laughs> sex has always been more about just the physical pleasure aspect. Mm -hmm. It's always been about intimacy, mm -hmm. and so for me, a condom represented a, a physical barrier between me and the other person and I was like not quite getting the intimacy that I was mm -hmm. desperately craving. So and that is was that, my and is, is that now I, yeah. sorry, but that's what you really thought or do you think that's just a subconscious excuse because you wanted to have unprotected sex? No. No. Because I still feel that, that way. Yeah. Now that you said that I really was never looking for that intimacy. In well, you weren't. You weren't. You just wanted the sex. Yeah, I just. Yeah. So it didn't matter whether yeah. there was a condom or not. All yet. right. So, okay. Dustin, uh, what went through your head when you were diagnosed? T take me to that moment. Um, when I was diagnosed, I was like, okay, shit. I need to take this, learn about it, figure what the fuck's up go going on with me, 
and then move forward. That was my next scene. So you were very sort of pragmatic about it. Okay, oh, yeah. this is what's happened. Now move forward. I was yeah. exactly the same. I, I got the diagnosis and it was like, okay, that's what it is. I can't turn the clock back. Where there's no going backwards. It's me sitting down on the floor and crying and throwing a tantrum about this is not going to change things. Exactly. So what do I have to do? Was it the same for you or different? I had a major existential crisis when <laughs> I was diagnosed. Because I was diagnosed with AIDS on my birthday. And so for me, it was like this great metaphor of living my previous life as a victim constantly with that mindset and I wasn't taking care of me. And so I knew I had to do a ton of inner work to like become healthy again, physically and mentally. Dr. Anu, you've mm -hmm. got the hard job of breaking this news to people. Yeah. Um, are their reactions kind of common or does it really go across the spectrum? Oh, it goes across the spectrum. I How do you find that moment when you as a physician have to look at somebody in their early 20s maybe and, and they have their whole life ahead of them um, and the stigma that exists tells that person who's nervously sitting there that if, if I get a positive diagnosis, my life is over. Now we know that is not the case. That is absolutely not the case anymore um, with where we're at with U equals U and science and everything else. But for that nervous person sitting in that chair, terrified of that response because that's what we think it means. What's that like? I think there's, you be become terrified when you don't know enough about it, right? So I have to ask both of you guys, did you know a lot about HIV? I thought I was going to be dead in three years. I was like, okay, this is my worst right. fear in life come true. Time to make the most of it. But how much did you, like looking back on how much knowledge you have now versus back then when you were diagnosed, how much, Way what was it more, worth? Right. And the irony is that I was volunteering for an 18 to 24 year old male organization to help prevent people getting HIV. So I was equipped, but in reality, I did, wasn't having these deep conversations that I needed to have to really get it. And you weren't necessarily practicing what you were, quote unquote, preaching. Exactly. Right. That too. Right, yeah. um, I come from a health care background, so I knew about it, but I also had this like golden child halo around me where I was like, oh, it'll never happen to me. Right. Um, well, this is why I asked, because number one, what I ascertain is how much do you know? Um, about HIV and AIDS. Number two, you also have to figure out what type of personality you have. Everybody has a different personality. There's ones that are just like you, that's like, I wanna know what I can do. Okay, this is what I have, what's the game plan? Yeah. Um, then there's other people that are like, whoa, <laughs> let me take a, I need a moment to digest. What, what did you say? So you give them that time and dependent on every individual, then you take it from there. So how is dating for you guys following the diagnosis? Um, so after that, I kind of went recluse, I, like, um, after I realized I that. can relate to that. I relate <laughs> in the sense that, you know, my boyfriend at the time basically had said, well, you're dangerous, that's it, mm. it's done. Um, and I sort of just gave up on the idea of having a boyfriend. I just went, okay, but sex, as you mentioned, grinder and whatever else, sex is easy for young gay dudes to get. We can jump on an app or jump online and guys are horny and they want to fool around. So I was like, okay, I've, I've, that's just what my life is going to be. So I, knew, I want to talk to you about uh, U equals U, undetectable equals yeah. untransmittable. It's kind of, it's what I'm very passionate about. These guys know about it. Not a lot of people in America do, but essentially it means you can have sex without a condom, if you're HIV positive, and as long as your viral load is at an undetectable Und level, yes. which means that the copies are so low that it can pretty much almost not be read, mm -hmm. you can't transmit the virus. But, yeah. U equals U only if you are you, but then there's talk of all the other STIs. So yes. as you're in your position as a physician, as a doctor, what does U equals U mean for you? And how do you balance that out in the messaging of wanting to give people hope about you can have a normal, healthy sex life and not be scared, but there's still a lot of other stuff out there. Right, um, so U equals U. Uh, yes, I do believe in that. So undetectable um, is actually effectively saying zero transmission rate. Um, there is a concept called the blip, okay? So th I I've don't had know. The blip. Yes, you've had, I've the had blip. a blip. I've had a blip. So, and I always and I always tell patients this: like at that moment when you're doing a blood test, it is like taking a picture of yourself at that moment. So, does that mean that two weeks later or a week later, when you're having sex, are you still undetectable? That's still a question mark because if you missed a dose, right, in between, or for some reason you had a blip, right? People take. 
um, people take up to even six months. It's interesting to me though, I feel like if you are HIV positive and you have access to the medication, mm -hmm. why wouldn't you be taking your pills every day? Now that's just me and I know I'm different, but, and I guess maybe drug use comes, Come, comes into it a, a little bit. Um, but I mean, I have, I take it every morning. It's just like, I have my coffee. It's exactly the same but thing. But there's so, um, but you have to think about life. And this isn't about mm -hmm. just HIV in general, people that are diabetics or anything else that have to take their insulin every day. And when you talk about work life and work stress, then you talk about the side effects of the medications as well, you know, and getting used to it, right? Then you, uh, it's just, Everything that's put together, you have to be responsible, and that's the thing: is being responsible and taking charge of your and body. And that goes and doing both it. ways, right? It does. Rafe, what's sex like post-diagnosis, and where you're at today? So I have, I did a little bit of course correction as far as the the way that I approach sex, and I, I'm not hooking up like I was before, and I realized that it was for me, it was intimacy. So, and I wasn't getting that through hookups. So it's been mostly through dating, and I disclose when I meet the person, and I would say. 99% of the time people are either okay with it or they're willing to have a discussion and a dialogue and once they learn then they're open to the idea. That's Doc, awesome. Doc yeah. yeah, what suggestions do you have for these guys and for our audience, for people, about how you approach that? As far as disclosure? Yeah. Be out, open and honest. Why do you want somebody in your life, that's what I'm saying, why do you want somebody to even be in your life that isn't receptive to or, or willing to understand that's and take point. honesty, right? To a certain, like you don't need to sugarcoat everything. So, Dr. Anu, tips and advice here, just generally about your HIV positive. Uh -huh. What does this mean for our sex lives? Is it over? No, absolutely not. And I don't think you should define yourself by uh, something that you have. I mean, I, I go back to being di diabetes as well, but um, this is, and it's one of my biggest pet peeves. How many people do you know that says, I'm diabetic? Mm -hmm. No, you are who you are and you have diabetes, yeah. you know, and that's just one aspect and it's just like, uh, yeah, and I have a sore throat, I have enlarged tonsils. Yeah. Don't define yourself by <laughs> On it, number first one. Date, no less. Right, and this, this is my baggage. Right. Well, this has been really interesting and I could talk about your sex lives forever and ever and we barely touched on mine, so lucky me. Um, that's going to do it for this episode of Plus Talk. I want to thank my guests, Dr. Anu Raif and Dustin. Thank you very much. Now, the conversation isn't over. We want your help. I want to hear from you and what you think about this particular topic and anything HIV related. You can join the conversation at Plus Life Media, hashtag end HIV stigma. And if you want more information on anything we have talked about in today's plus talk you can go to pluslifemedia.com we'll be adding extra content and a little behind the scenes action stuff there as well so you want the juicy details head over there dustin will tell you everything thank you all so much for being here thank you i'll see you next time